Hello, welcome back to Jonathan Reads. Uh, we're reading the Sacred Pipe, Black Elk's account of the Seven Rites of the Ogallala Sioux, Chapter Two, The Keeping of the Soul. It is through this rite that we purify the souls of our dead and that our love for one another is increased. The four pure women who eat the sacred part of the buffalo, as I shall describe, must always remember that their children will be walking and thus should be raised in a sacred manner. The mother should sacrifice everything for her children and must develop in herself and in her children a great love for Wakan Tonka, for in time these children will become holy people and leaders of the nation and will have the power to make others Wakan. At first, we kept only the souls of a few of our great leaders, but later we kept the souls of almost all good people. By keeping a soul according to the proper rites, as given to us by the white buffalo cowwoman, known also as white buffalo maiden, one so purifies it that the spirit becomes one, and it is thus able to return to the place where it was born, Wakantanka, and need not wander about the earth as is the case with the souls of bad people. Further, the keeping of a soul helps us to remember death and always Wakantanka, who is above all dying. Whenever a soul is kept, many of the nations go to its teepee to pray, and on the day that the soul is released, all the people gather and send their voices to Wakantanka through the soul, which is to travel upon his sacred path. But now I shall explain to you how this rite was first done by our people. One of the great-great-grandchildren of Standing Hollowhorn had a child whom the parents loved very much. But it happened one day this child died, which made the father very sad. And so he went and spoke to the keeper of the sacred pipe, who was at that time High Hollowhorn. We have been instructed by the sacred woman in the use of the pipe and in keeping of the soul of a person who has died. Now I am very sad because I have lost my loved son. But I wish to keep his soul as we have been taught, and since you are the keeper of the sacred pipe, I wish you to instruct me. How hechetu alo, it is good, High Hollow Horn said, and they then went to the place where the child lay, and where the women were crying very bitterly. As they approached, the crying stopped, and going to where the child lay, High Hollow Horn spoke. This boy seems to be dead. Yet he is not really, for we shall keep his soul among our people, and through this our children and the children of their children will become Wakan. We shall now do as we were taught by the sacred woman and by the pipe. It is the wish of Wakan Tonka that this be done. A lock of the child's hair was then taken, and as High Hollowhorn did this, he prayed, O Wakan Tonka, behold us. It is the first time that we do thy will in this way, as you have taught us through the sacred woman. We will keep the soul of this child so that our mother the earth will bear fruit, and so that our children will walk the path of life in a sacred manner. High Hollow Horn then prepared to purify the child's lock of hair. A glowing coal was brought in, and a pinch of sweet grass was placed upon it. O Wakan Tonka, High Hollow Horn prayed, this smoke from the sweet grass will rise up to you and will spread throughout the universe. Its fragrance will be known by the wingeds, the four-leggeds, and the two-leggeds, for we understand that we are all relatives. May all our brothers be tame and not fear us. High Hollow Horn took up the lock of hair and holding it over the smoke made motion with it to heaven, to earth, and to the four quarters of the universe. Then he spoke to the soul within the hair. Behold, O soul, where you dwell upon this earth will be a sacred place. This center will cause the people to be as walkin' as you are. Our grandchildren will now walk the path of life with pure hearts and with firm steps. After purifying the lock of hair in the smoke, High Hollow Horn turned to the mother and father of the child, saying, we shall gain great knowledge from this soul which has here been purified. Be good to it and love it, for it is Wakan. We are now fulfilling the will of Wakan Tonka as it was made known to us through the sacred woman. 
For do you not remember as she was leaving how she turned back the second time? This represents the keeping of the soul, which we are now going to do. May this help us to remember that all the fruits of the wingeds, the two-leggeds, and the four-leggeds are really the gifts of Wakan Tonka. They are all Wakan and should be treated as such. The lock of hair was wrapped in sacred buckskin, and this bundle was placed at a special place in the teepee. Then High Hollow Horn took up the pipe, and after holding it over the smoke, filled it carefully in a ritual manner. Pointing the stem towards heaven, he prayed, Our grandfather Wakan Tonka, you are everything and yet above everything. You are first. You have always been. This soul that we are keeping will be at the center of the sacred hoop of this nation. Through this center, our children will have strong hearts, and they will walk the straight red path in a Wakan manner. O oh, Wakan Tonka, you are the truth. The two-legged peoples who put their mouths to this pipe will become the truth itself. There will be in them nothing impure. Help us to walk the sacred path of life without difficulty, with our minds and hearts continually fixed on you. The pipe was then lighted and smoked and was passed sunwise around the circle. The whole world within the pipe was offered up to Wakan Tonka. When the pipe came back to High Hollowhorn, he rubbed sweet grass over it on the west, north, east, and south sides in order to purify it, lest any unworthy person might have touched it. Turning to the people, he then said, My relatives, this pipe is Wakan. We all know that it cannot lie. No man who has within him any untruth may touch it to his mouth. Further, my relatives, our father, Wakan Tonka, has made his will known to us here on earth, and we must always do that which he wishes if we would walk the sacred path. This is the first time that we carry out this sacred rite of keeping the soul. And it will be of great benefit to our children and to their children's children. My relatives, grandmother and mother earth, we are of earth and belong to you. O oh, mother earth, from whom we receive our food, you care for our growth, as do our own mothers. Each step that we take upon you should be done in a sacred manner. Each step should be as a prayer. Remember this, my relatives, that the power of this pure soul will be with you as you walk, for it, too, is the fruit of Mother Earth. It is as a seed planted in your center, which will in time grow in your hearts and cause our generations to walk in a Wakan manner. High Hollow Horn then lifted his hand and sent his voice to Wakantanka. O oh, Father and Grandfather Wakantanka, you are the source and end of everything. My Father Wakantanka, you are the one who watches over and sustains all life. O oh, my Grandmother, you are the earthly source of all existence. And Mother Earth, the fruits which you bear are the source of life for the earth peoples. You are always watching over your fruits, as does a mother. May the steps which we take in life upon you be sacred and not weak. Help us, O Wakan Tonka, to walk the red path with firm steps. May we who are your people stand in a Wakan manner, pleasing to you. Give to us strength, which comes from an understanding of your powers. Because you have made your will known to us, we will walk the path of life in holiness bearing the love and knowledge of you in our hearts. For this and for everything, we give thanks. A bundle was then made containing the body of the child, and the men took this to a high place away from the camp and placed it on a scaffold set up in a tree. When they returned, High Hollow Horn went into the teepee with the father of the child in order to teach him how he must prepare himself for the great duty which he would fulfill and from which he would become a holy man. You are now keeping the soul of your own son, High Hollow Horn said, who is not dead, but is with you. From now on, you must live in a sacred manner, for your son will be in this teepee until his soul is released. You should remember that the habits which you established during this period will remain with you always. You must take great care that no bad person enters the lodge where you keep the soul.
that there be no arguments or dissensions. There should always be harmony in your lodge, for all these things have an influence on the soul which is being purified here. Your hands are walking. Treat them as such. Your eyes are walking. When you see your relatives in all things, see them in a sacred manner. Your mouth is walking, and every word you say should reflect this holy state in which you are now living. You should raise your head often, looking up into the heavens. Whenever you eat of the fruit of Mother Earth, feed likewise your son. If you do this, and all that I have taught you, Wakantanka will be merciful to you. Every day and night your son will be with you. Look after his soul all the time, for through this you will always remember Wakantanka. From this day on, you will be walking, and as I have taught you, so you too will now be able to teach others. The sacred pipe will go a long way, even to the end, and so will the soul of your son. It is indeed so. Hechetu huelu. That's the end of section one. We will continue section two in the next video.